Good evening, children. Praise the Lord. How are you all? I am good evening. Ha, ah, good evening, good evening. Somebody said good evening to me. All right, yeah. So, did you all get a chance to go through the uh yesterday's session? Can you be doing it? Uh, Brian said he is doing it or he just accidentally showed me a thumbs up. Huh? Oh yes, you studied. Oh good Brian, good good good. All right. Okay. Before Jocelyn Nandi is saying, why don't we all switch on the videos? Ella, I don't see you these days. How come? Otherwise, you were the one always used to be, you know, right. Yeah. All right. So I cannot see. Ah, Jewel, we'll pray. Okay. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day that you have given us. Thank you for all the blessings that we have in our life, Lord. Lord Jesus, today as we sit here and listen to this Bible uh, teaching, may we understand everything that Joseph Nanti is telling us and let it be implanted into our hearts, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hi, Joseph. Hello, hi, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, as uh, uh, Auntie was asking, did you all do the revision? Yes or no? Okay, good, good. Praise God. That's why, remember, if you don't revise, then on that day you will remember. But later on, it will not be in your mind. That's why you have to always remind yourself. Okay? That's why David always says, remember my soul. And he tells his soul to remember. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So we saw about worry. Correct? The third uh, the third soil, I, I, I never expected that uh, the third soil will go for one week. But I think that is very, very important because worry are the thorns that will choke the good seed, the word of God that you have already planted in your heart. You might have the word in your heart and you have the understanding and you also started to get rooted. But then when you allow worry when you begin to meditate on that worry on that problem more than you meditate god's word that's the time what happens that's the time you start allowing uh, the evil one the devil and that's when you start hearing the voice of the enemy and that's the time you allow the spirit you know, uh, worry is not just thoughts, it's actually demonic. And that worry is designed to steal, kill and destroy what the Lord has for us. Praise God. And we saw what is worry. Worry is negative meditation. The word of God says, yes. when we start meditating the word of God, we hear the voice of God. When we start meditating the problem, that's when you start hearing the voice of the stranger. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. I thought I'll give you some notes before we continue. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, before we write some notes, we will go and see one more uh, one more incident in the Bible, okay? 1 Samuel uh, chapter 30 from verse 1. One minute. Okay. One minute. Hmm. Let's open Yes. I was. 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 I was.
1 Samuel chapter 13 verse 1 onwards. Can I read? Yeah. And Saul was years old when he began to reign and reign two Not years old. 30, 3 0. I am thinking, how come Saul came here? Hmm. Now, David and his man hmm. went to, they came to Zigzag on the third day. Hmm. The Amalekites are laid off Naeb on, on Zigzag and attacked Zigzag and burned it down and okay 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 now when david and his men okay his men they came to ziglag on the third day the amalekites had made a raid on the negeb and on ziglag they had attacked Ziklag, burnt it down, and taken captive the women and all who were in it, both small and great. They killed none of them, but carried them off and went their way. When David and his men came to the city, they found so David and his men came to the city and behold, no, I did not read somewhere I missed. Did you change the translation or something? No. Okay, so David and his men. It's the third verse, I think. Yeah, third verse. Came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire and their wives and the sons and their daughters were taken captives. Now, did you understand what happened? David yes. Yes. and his men, they left, they left the place. Okay, they went to a different place. They were not there in the city. And when they were not in the city, that was the time the Amalekites they came into the city. Now David is not there and his men are not there. Correct? They came and what did they do? What did they do? They, they, burned, they, they burned, burned it with fire. And they burned with fire everything. Correct? So they yeah. burned everything and they carried the wives and children and the sons of David and the men. Correct? And daughters. Huh? Daughters. Daughters, daughters. Yes. And so when David and, and his men, when they came back, what did they saw? Ashes. He burned down. Everything is burnt and everybody is missing. Correct? Yes. Now, what kind yes. of situation is David facing? Because, you know, yesterday, uh, somebody, uh, Mariana was asking, right? What will I do when worry comes, when problem comes? So in this situation, what comes? Worry. Was it a, Worry. What is the, was it a small problem or a big problem? Big problem. Big problem. Big problem, right? Yes. 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 Now, yes. what should David do? What will you do in this condition? I will worry where the people have gone, like where they are missing. Not only people, it is your own, your own family, correct? Not only the whole city but your own family okay sarah want to say something yes yeah, sarah miss i'll just read the scripture 
Ah, uh huh. Really, I should come to your house and see. <laughs> I'm having not worry. Okay. Now, now see this. Now see the next one. And David and the people that way with him. Can you put a KJ uh, NRSV? Okay, I'll read from the third verse. When David and his men came to the city, they found it burned down and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him raised their voice, voices and wept until they had no more strength to weep. Now, what did David do? He wept and he wept. Did, did he respond or yet? Yeah. Yeah. He reacted. Did he cry? Yes. yes. Until they had no strength, they cried and they cried and they cried. Correct? Yes. Okay. David's two wives also have been taken captive. Ahinom and Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David was in great danger. Now, what was the danger? David was in great danger for the people spoke of stoning him. It is because of David that we all left the city. Correct? Because he is the leader. Now, they all are so angry with whom? With? David. 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 Now, first of all, David has lost Everyone, correct? And now his own people, his own men who are with him, who come with him, whom he trained, his own people, they want to kill him. Everybody has come against him. Can you see what kind of situation David is in? Yes. He lost everything. And even those few of them who had to support him, they are coming against him. He's already weeping and crying for what has happened because everything is burnt and his wife and children, they all are taken captive and all the people, the whole city is in a big, you know, in a big problem, yes. a big tra 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 tragedy, okay? And now the people, the, the men who are with them also are coming against him with anger and they want to stone him and they want to kill him. Because all the people were bitter in spirit for their sons, for their sons and daughters. The reason why they want to kill David is they're so angry because they lost their sons and daughters. Now I want to see the next line that is something so amazing that you have to learn from David. But David strengthened himself in in the Lord, his God. Wow. Remember I told you yesterday, desperately and purposefully. Desperately and purposefully. What did David do? David strengthened. Another translation says, David encouraged himself. He strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. So what should we do? We have to strengthen ourselves in the Lord. When? In the midst of the problem. In the midst of the situation. In the midst of, you know, David had every excuse to say, that, you know, that he's helpless. Correct? He had every right to say that I'm in a problem. He actually worried. He actually reacted. But he instantly changed. He instantly shifted from worry. And he started to respond. And he began to encourage himself in the Lord. He began to strengthen himself in the Lord. 
if david could encourage himself and strengthen himself in this situation can i encourage myself in the lord in any kind of situation no matter how worse the situation is no matter how worse it looks no matter how bad it looks thank you jesus is god so are we supposed to encourage ourselves especially when we hear a bad news yes 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 to encourage ourselves in the lord especially when uh, people come against us you know what what is the second si uh, second uh, type soil the second type soil is when people come against them they get offended what is offense what is the meaning of the word offense my negative reaction to people's yeah. comment you know wait 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 my okay. negative reaction my negative reaction, reaction to the comment or negative situation okay Yeah, offense is my negative reactions to people's comment or situation. Very good. Negative yeah, negative reaction to people's comments or to a situation. Negative. Now that means, according to the definition, did. Okay, somebody is asking me to repeat the question. I asked, "What is offense?" Okay, that means, what, did uh, David get offended? Yes, because he had a negative reaction to the situation. But did he instantly changed his mindset? You know, if he would have not changed his mindset, he was in a danger. that's why the scripture says david was in a great danger if he would have allowed the problem he he was in such a danger that he would have lost his life but before that danger would uh, you know kill steal and destroy he immediately strengthened himself in the lord okay now the next verse is not applicable for us okay the next verse i'm going to read it's not applicable because uh, we don't we we are not we are no longer under the old covenant okay but for us we have the bible we have the word of god david said to the priest abita son of ahimelech bring, bring me the ephod okay Yeah, you know, you're saying something. I said E four. E four. Okay. E four. Now, what is the E four? The covenant book. E four. E four is something the high priest used to have it. Okay. It is. It. It. It is. Uh, usually, they have it on their dress. They wear it. Okay. And this E four is. Uh, they use it. to get to uh, you know to get a message or direction from the lord face god it is it is a kind of a, a tablet or something that is on their outer garment but praise god we don't we don't need a, a, a effort all that we need is the written word of god so what did david do he first approached the high priest because on those days the word of god the the how to say uh, the law the book of the law was not with the common people it was only in the with the priests and the high priests and the levites only they used to teach the word not like now they ha we have the word so what did david do he first went to the lord he first went to search the answer from god not from man now did david strengthen himself you know what we do you know the biggest problem that we have is we immediately call people correct 
and we want to speak all our problem and we and you know people would say when i say all my problem i feel so like that's a lie of the devil did david encourage himself strengthen himself in the lord or in the people he encouraged the lord himself in the lord do you want encouragement from people or from god from god from god, god. and is, and the devil would say you will feel so nice so light if you god. share all your problem no the devil wants you to open your mouth and speak death he wants to speak your problem and you might feel nice but actually you have opened the door for the enemy that's why you have to be very 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 careful that you don't speak words that is contradicting to god's word david did not receive his strength he did not call at that time no phone call but you don't call anybody and expect somebody to comfort you you have the written word of god you have the gift of tongues you have the scriptures you have the sword of the spirit you have to strengthen yourself you have to encourage yourself in the lord Now see the eight to us. David inquired of the Lord, not me, not the men, not the people. He inquired. He want to know what is God's will here. What is God's word going to tell me about this situation? See, every time you have a problem, you have a situation in the written word of God. you cannot encourage yourself without the written word of god the only way for you to encourage yourself in the midst of the problem you have to encourage yourself through the written word of god if david could encourage himself and if he could strengthen himself in such situation where people are coming to kill him where he lost everything the whole city is burnt in that situation if he could encourage himself if he could strengthen himself yeah. in the lord and he was seeking god for direction yeah. he did not allow his emotions to dictate him you know who's a matured person or i'll ask in another way you know who is a, a immature person who is a very immature person and who is a mature person someone who doesn't speak sense or doesn't know the basic knowledge okay or someone who is not in his right mind yeah can i say wait let me let me take sira yeah sira those who have not spoken before i like to hear from them yeah. person who speaks like a child and who's not very um who's not very knowledgeable okay so uh, all your answers are coming around knowledge okay jahaya a person who uh Who doesn't? It doesn't speak proper knowledge. It's an immature uh, person. Okay, I thought Aya, you will give me right answer. I thought you heard it before. Yeah, yeah, Brian. A person who doesn't act according to his age. Ah, uh, age is nothing to do with maturity. Yet. you can be old and you be immature you can be young and you can be mature okay i think elisha will know the answer ashley will know the answer yeah uh can i say yeah uh yeah that person is very naive and he doesn't know what he's uh, saying or doing no okay last two people okay i'm getting late it means not a person who is strong by heart No, no, no. Can I say? No, Enoch. Wait. I know you know. Elisha, let me see what you're saying. Yes. A uh, a person who has a a different mindset, like oh no uh, no no. Ashley. A person who uh, speaks death. and does not not seek into the kingdom no, of see. god 
Yeah, Jeron. Jeron, you already said in the beginning. Let me give somebody else. Lisa. Is it a person who lacks wisdom? It, all that what you said, I won't say 100% wrong, but there is something, it, it is all connected to what I am going to say. I'm not saying your answer is wrong, but one who doesn't trust in the Lord. Someone okay, I, who doesn't I, I, strengthen I, 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 himself in, shall, shall in I give the, the Lord. Shall I give you the answer? Okay, Enoch will give Is, the, is it like... Uh, yeah, somebody was saying... Oh, yeah. Fall according to the word of... Mature person is fall according no, no, to the word Enoch. of... No, no. Okay, I'll give the answer. Shall I? Please. Yes. I can understand you all want to yes. try to... <laughs> Okay, shall I? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Let me see. Okay. Oh, you got muted. I gave you unmute. Yeah. One person who is strengthening himself by people not oh, no. okay okay listen listen a mature person a weak person is a person who cannot control his emotions a person who cannot control his emotions is a immature person you, you can be 70 you can be 80 you can be 40 you can be so you know you can be uh, you know in age you can be elder but who's not able to control his his or her emotions, he is an immature person. A mature person is a person who's able to control his emotions. Now, controlling your emotion, you might look like, what is in this? No. Without maturity, you cannot have control over your emotions. You know, uh, it is very, very easy for you to make emotional decisions. Many times, if you check your life, your, um, your decisions are emotional decisions. And that's why you make wrong decisions. Because you don't think logically. Emotionally, you make. When you're angry, a person might be very angry and resign the job. And later on think, why did I do this? He did not think, but he allowed his emotions to dictate him. Many a times when you are worried, when you are in a problem in your situation, you become so emotional and you make emotion, emotional decision. Who is an immature person? Simple. A person who cannot control his emotion is an immature person. And always remember, a person who cannot control his emotion will always try to control others. Maybe the world will call this at leadership. Maybe the world will call this, oh, that person is a person of authority. But according to the Bible, when a person is trying to control somebody else, very simple, that person is an immature person. A leader will never control, but influence. We are all created to be leader. A leader will never control other people, but they will influence other people. Jesus is the only best example of, of being a good leader. Yeah, Ria. People also call those kind of uh, people young at heart or they're like kids inside. Maturity doesn't depend on the age. Not the age, not the age. Mm. Anybody, like, you know, kids, they don't act like uh, adults. They go loose. They're like set free type. But some I adults also act like that. So, so, uh, so it... Yeah. It, it, so the problem is maturity doesn't come in one day. Correct? You have yeah. to practice. You have to train. Train what? Train to allow the word of God to dominate you. The word of God to take control over your life. That's why David is a mature person. In this place, if you see, yes, the problem st struck. There was a situation. Yes, he reacted. Yes, he allowed his emotion to control, but he did, he did not take a long time. He instantly, he shifted himself. He did not allow his emotions to dictate him, but he allowed the word of God to dictate. That's why he went to the Lord and he was asking direction from the Lord. 
Now, in your situation, you have to think, am I going to allow my emotions to take control? Many times, have you seen when there is a fight between you and your brother or your sister or somebody, you would speak words and then you wonder later on, why did I say this? Have you, have you ever thought like that? Why did yeah. I speak like this? You know yeah. why you spoke no. like that? Because you allowed your emotions to take control over you. You did not have control over yourself. That's why the Bible teaches us, especially when you are in a situation, in a negative situation, you have to train yourself not to open your mouth and speak anything. I would always tell, I know when, when somebody would come and ask me, I'll tell them, when you're in a problem, especially when you're emotional, don't make any decision. Because when you are emotional, when you, when, especially when you have negative emotion, the decisions that you make will always be wrong decisions. Because most of the time we make decisions to protect our emotion. Most of the time we, we make decisions to protect our feelings, but we don't take decision to protect our future. An immature person will make decision, will take decision to protect his emotion, but not to protect his future. Do we do that? Yes, in small, small things. Small, small things matter. Small, small decisions matter. Remember this all the time that a mature person is a person who can take control over his emotion. And that cannot be accomplished with your own willpower. I'm not talking about willpower. But I'm talking about self-control that comes, that is one of the fruit of the spirit not fruit of the flesh it is the fruit of the spirit it comes from the holy spirit when you begin to build yourself in the word of god praise god yeah the idea you raised hand yeah you also made us to write that feeling and emotion determines my decision yes feelings and my emotions determines my decision so my emotions i should not allow my emotions to dictate me but i have to allow the word of god to take control over my emotions that's what david did david did not allow his emotions to take emotional decision you know somebody in david's situation would have gone and committed suicide yes or no I lost my children, I lost my wife, I lost everybody. Now I lost, now even the people who are with me are coming against me to kill me, but I'll go and kill myself. But he did not make an emotional decision. He immediately encouraged himself in the Lord. He immediately strengthened himself in the Lord. And that's what the Lord is telling you today. Don't ever make emotional decision but in the midst of that, even when your emotions are negative, even when your emotions are wrong, even when you are you're feeling everything is a, a gone against you, wrong in your life, you if David can encourage himself, if David can strengthen himself in the Lord, then you can also strengthen. The first thing you have to go is you have to go to the word of God and you have to start taking for every problem. If, if David at that time, he did not have the Bible like how. In spite of that, he went and he was seeking for instruction from God. How much more we now who have the Holy Spirit, we have the written word of God. How much we, you and I can go and encourage ourselves in the Lord and seek the solution from the Lord. Yes, God, put that scripture, uh, Enoch. 1 Samuel 30. 1 Samuel 30. Okay, 8th verse. 1 Samuel 38 from 8. David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this band? Shall I overtake them? He answered him, pursue. For you shall surely overtake and shall surely rescue. So David 
remember david did not have the promise like you and i have okay but the moment he got the promise the good news is for you and i we have the written document no no matter what is your situation no matter what the problem you go through no matter what kind of uh, things is happening what kind of medical report you have or 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 a person going through some kind of situation no matter what is the situation we already have the promise of god the seed that is given to us david did not have but he was he went in seek asking god and god gave him the promise and what is that what 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 word did god give god said pursue for you shall surely overtake and surely rescue the moment david got the word from god he started to believe the word and he started to act according to that word so david set out he and the 600 men who were with him they came to the valley bizor where they stayed who were left behind but david but david went on with the pursuit he and 400 men 200 stayed behind too exhausted to cross the uh, wadi bizar sorry if i'm pronouncing wrong in the open country they found an egyptian this is something so so beautiful okay now david is god told him to go pursue to go behind the amalekites and he said you will surely rescue your children and your family and your people okay god gave him a promise he believed the promise and david start to go pursuing the amalekites okay now when he is going on the way he found an egyptian and brought him to david okay and in the open country they found an egyptian and brought him to david they gave him bread to eat they gave him water to drink now when you are first of all when you have lost your children your family okay and now when you have gone in search of when you are going in search of what you have lost will you go and feed someone no what is david doing david is feeding he was helping he was giving water and he was you know you will think i can't waste my time my people are dying if i am going to waste my time here for the egyptian what about my family correct and first of all he is not an amalekite he is an egyptian but what did they do they gave him bread to eat and they gave him water to drink they also gave him a piece of fig cake and two cluster of raisins when he had eaten he his spirit revived he was al- almost you know what always my spiritual father used to say this when you go and solve other people problem god will send people into your life to solve your problem when you go and solve other people's problem god will send people to send to solve your problem when you are in the midst of a situation in a problem okay you don't start thinking how to solve your problem but you know as long as you are worried okay when you are when you are worry yesterday we saw right a humble person is a person who casts all his care unto the lord did we see that yes, yes. when you worry you are not humble because you are only thinking about your problem and you are thinking i am going to handle this problem when you think you are going to handle the problem you become the god of your life Yes or no? Yes. Because now, when you, if you think when you are worried, what are you thinking? You are thinking about you, or you are you thinking about others? Ma'am, so when we become worried, do we become immature because we rely on uh, human help? Not only human help. When you are worried, you are all the time thinking about what has happened to you. Yes or no? When David yes. was crying and weeping. 
at that time he was only thinking about himself correct the person who is fully worried what is the definition of pride pride is to be self centered and self focused right so a person is in worry he is crowning himself making himself the king making himself the god and he is all the time thinking about himself that's why when you cast all your cares unto the lord you humble yourself when a person is humble he is not thinking about him but he is thinking about others when you begin to help other people you cannot remain in depression can mother teresa be in uh, be in uh, depression no. no she can never go into she when she was alive okay she would have never been able to gone into depression why because she was not thinking about her problem she was solving other people problem anybody who is solving other people problem can never go into depression anyone who who's helping other people can never remain in in depression is selfishness worry is selfishness but can you see when they were in a problem they were not just thinking about themselves even in that situation they were they were able to help a egyptian feed him and what happened to him see the 12th verse they also gave him a piece of fig cake and two clusters of raisin when he had eaten his spirit revived means what he was almost dying in hunger and in thirst and his spirit revived for he had not eaten bread or drunk water for 3 days and 3 nights and david said to him to whom do you belong where are you from he said i am a young man of egypt servant to a amlekite it is the amlekites who came and who had taken captive and who is he he is an egyptian but he is a servant of amlekite my my master left me behind because i fell sick 3 days can you see the reason why they left him to die because he was sick they were so selfish that they couldn't take care of the sick man and they left him there and went but david when he saw even though he was a egyptian he fed him he gave water he gave him cake and now he solved his problem he helped this man he had made a ride okay david said raid raid yeah he had made a raid on the on the nijib of the <laughs> i really don't know how to pronounce cherith thais cherith thais and on that which belongs to judah and on the nijib of caleb and we burn bigla he is the one who was with amlekites and he burnt his city that's what he's saying we burnt ziglag down david said to him will you take me down to this raiding party he said swear to me by god that you will not kill me or hand me over to the master and i will take you down to them and when he had taken him down they were spread out all over the ground eating and drinking and dancing because of the great amount of spoil that they taken from the land of the philistines and from the land of juda david attacked them from what is that twilight 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 twilight, twilight. 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 until the twilight. evening of the next twilight. not one of them escaped now remember this is supernatural okay not one of them ex- escaped except 400 young men who mounted camels camel and fled they would recovered all that the amlekites had taken and they would rescue his two wives wow if david would have not helped the egyptian he would have missed it yes or no so is it very important for us to go and solve other people problem yes 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 that's how the kingdom of god works your promotion is hidden 
in other people's life especially those people don't underestimate anybody don't look down at anyone whether the person is big rich or not rich simple educated not educated don't you don't know your future is and is locked in that person that person might be a simple person that person might be an ordinary person but god has put people in your life for you to go and reach out to them and to solve their problem and god will send people into your life to solve your problem praise god thank you jesus yes eli you want to ask something why does david have two wives hmm why does he have two wives for that is in the old testament that is not see, that's why when jesus came did jesus say it is right to have wife, two wives no jesus yeah. said no according to the law the husband and the wife has to leave their parents and they are made one flesh okay but in the old covenant they did not have holy spirit like how we had correct so god god knew it was wrong but god did not punish them because god knew that they are weak we are not weak because we have the holy spirit now we are not living with our own strength but in the old covenant they also had the holy spirit but there is a difference now holy spirit is dwelling inside of us we are made one with the holy spirit but for them holy spirit came upon them to accomplish a certain uh, assignment there is a difference okay so they were not we they did not have the empowerment like how we had so god is a merciful god actually david if god has to judge no then he had to judge everybody and punish everybody correct but god was still showing mercy god was not treating them based on their action if you see the whole bible none of them were perfect everybody had different different weakness but if you see in the old testament joseph i would say joseph is the only person who was very different in the old covenant but everybody had weakness but in spite of their weakness god still used them okay but it is not right what david did was not right it was wrong but yet god used them praise god so so was david punished later on for his sin no he was forgiven <laughs> he was forgiven for his sins see it is uh, how to explain to you in the old covenant okay many things that uh, god knew that they cannot uh, do with their own strength and he, he even though he know that they were wrong but yet god was still blessing them god was still with them based on their faith not based on their good works based on their faith okay and there are certain things god permitted at that time because they were in the old covenant and they did not have the holy spirit like how we have okay but that doesn't mean that is right but now praise god we are empowered to live a holy life we are empowered to live a good life okay for example another example in this old covenant if you see this uh, the you know david went and he fought with them and he killed those people can you kill people now in the new covenant no because our battle is not against flesh and blood then why did god allow it in the old covenant because in the old covenant david did not have authority over the evil spirit he did not have if you see in the old covenant they did not have power to rebuke to command the spirit to leave they did not have the authority against the power of darkness because everybody were born under sin and they were bondage in sin but for us no more the war is against flesh and blood because jesus died on the cross and he defeated the devil in the cross and he has given us authority over the kingdom of darkness now we are not going to fight against the evil uh, uh, the evil person but the real culprit the devil our fight is against the evil spirit okay now many people ask me why should god tell them to go and kill why should they go and have to go and kill the amalekites because because jesus has to be born okay in the in the lineage of david correct so if jesus has to be born there has to be a virgin 
okay if jesus has to be be born then the plan of salvation has to be fulfilled but if these people though they go and get married to the gentiles and they mix with them then they will they all will be corrupted when everybody would be corrupted the plan of salvation will not come into manifestation now god's main purpose is to bring the plan of salvation so he has to he 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 needs man's cooperation to bring the plan of salvation only if jesus comes and he dies on the cross only then humanity can receive salvation forgiveness of sins otherwise there is no forgiveness of sins. so god needs somebody to cooperate with him and remember god is a god who would always speak first and then only it happens it manifests so everything that the messiah is going to do it has to be spoken first that's why you see it is it happened as it was written that's why everything has to be prophesized for that god needs man's cooperation man has to prophesy okay so the plan of salvation has to fulfill god cannot just send jesus to this earth he needs man's cooperation to for the messiah to come at the right time at the appointed time and that's why god has to protect this these israelites the lineage of israelites from corruption are you understanding even when the reason why god many people would say why did god uh, uh, you know destroyed the world with the flood at that time if you see in the time of noah sin multiplied in such a way if god would have not wiped away the world with the flood that sin was like a cancer like a gangrene it would have wiped away the whole human race where the plan of salvation had there is no way that uh, the, the virgin would come there would be no way that uh, jesus could be born there is no way salvation god had to clean the world because sin multiplied so much in this planet earth that was just like how a doctor has to amputate a leg to save a person's life yes or no now is the doctor amputing the leg to harm the person or to save the life save the life save the life the only thing the act of amputing you will say what cruel doctor he is but if you understand the reason why he is amputing he is not doing it to harm but he is doing it to save in the same way in the old covenant there are so many things god did it is not to uh, destroy human race but actually to protect if you only see the act you will not understand but if you see the whole picture you will understand okay so god doesn't want god is not a god who is a stick all the time want to punish us and want to pass judgment but actually he wants to save us he wants to give us mercy what is mercy mercy is god not giving us what we deserve god is a merciful god he doesn't want to give you what you deserve but rather he wants to give you grace he wants to give you what you don't deserve praise god it is actually more in depth okay but we will learn step by step praise god thank you jesus it is already late <laughs> thank you jesus Yes, yeah. our God is so merciful. He gives so many chances. Yes. You know, He gives our us so many opportunities. You know, you focus on someone else. So, yeah. and then you know, as a human being, when we focus on, I was thinking when you were talking, as a human being, when we focus on someone else, we automatically forget our issues also. That way, also that is also one added advantage. That is so. so wonderful because yes. human being you know we are more always on our own thinking process and our own focusing on our own problems but uh, god gave a human a uh, you know compassionate heart also that way you know we focus on others and we forget our own issues and move on the moving yes. on so weak we are so we, we so he gives all kind of you know opportunity just take this take this and even, do some even, even jesus sister when he heard the news john the baptist he loves him right, right. he heard the news that he he is he is dead and he was so heavy in his heart and he goes to a lonely place even at that place bible says he had compassion and he healed the sick he cast out demons he could have sat in a place and depressed and thinking 
but he right. bashed the devil there he did not allow the devil he went and he because he saw the devil as the enemy and he went that's how we should be when yeah. depressing things happen you come out of yourself how by focusing other people's problem mm-hmm. right today uh, you know i was really sad because one of our preacher fa- uh, uh, father one priest very young priest 40 year old he died of covid and today was his funeral so then i was thinking you know the, the uh, all his you know the preachers in that you know the, the mass they were all so hopeful so hopeful one brother one father was saying you know somebody uh, somebody asked him you know oh, so you lost one wing he said you know this uh, brother of mine died but he's an angel he has two wings so i have three wings he said so he they they took it so positively they are saying you know someone is you know praying for them you know they tried they prayed but after that jesus said you know we need him so he took him so now we shouldn't sit and cry we should see him what all he did we should follow his you know very great preacher so now what you what you told me you know makes so much sense you know we should look into someone else not always focus on always you know we shouldn't be focusing on our own issues then we cannot even get out we will be focusing only uh, you know even brother johnson always says you know go you know don't wait and be perfect <laughs> while doing you will learn a lot of things that's uh, that's so profound actually yeah. thank you joseph and i i wanted to so one minute you will pray for us every yes, day yes 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 sure sure so yeah thank you yeah yeah there's somebody who's asking question but it looks like the answer yeah. to the question cannot be small okay then we will do it tomorrow or because it's 8:55 or yeah 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 you, Yeah. or if you have time you we can continue. i have time i have no yes, problem yes yes please please go yeah. ahead then yeah somebody is asking uh, jehaya before that let me take that person i don't know what is the person's name i want a question about the second soil can you raise your hand it's uh, me i actually have a quest just a small one i just want to ask if the yeah. second soil is when we un- when we understand the word of god but we get offended or when we understand the word of god but we don't but we didn't take the time to root it in us you because you are not rooted in it you get offended if you would have got rooted in the word you would have not got offended okay thank you yeah yeah jaha yeah you were asked you wanted to ask something i don't have anything to ask i have a small testimony i want to share okay Okay, so it so happened that uh, every day I say thank you Jesus for taking me safely and bringing me safely. So it so happened that today when I was in class, um, I started to feel restless. Hmm. So suddenly, so I went to ask the teacher, Miss, can I go to the clinic room? And so then suddenly the and the nurses over there said that my face was turning pale. and that they said and so they had to give my mom a call but during that time when they were talking to, to my mom i was saying thank you jesus praise you jesus while uh, breathing so um this happened uh, today yes so you what you were feeling giddy yes okay so you were feeling like you are going unconscious that time you opened your mouth and you start praising yes so what happened then So after that, um, um, uh, I I didn't manage to faint by the grace of God. You didn't? I didn't. I didn't faint. You did not faint. You got a strength. Yes. Those who don't know, when Jahaya was in her mother's womb, doctor said that this child will be a Down syndrome child. Yes, Jahaya. What? What doctor said that this child is What? a down syndrome child and they even suggested not to carry on with the pregnancy correct yes but then jahas daddy said no i don't accept this report of the doctor what's the meaning of down syndrome down syndrome disabled. is disabled disabled um yeah, yeah when you can't function properly they won't yeah, be like normal children they'll be like mentally challenged children 
Okay. We have. Kept so uh, is okay. the hand? You can even you make, when you see a Down syndrome child with the face, you can make out the child is Down syndrome. But can you see Jaya how she is now? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Lively, perfect. Yeah. Praise God. Praise Thank God. you. Yeah. So Thank you are a walking miracle and a blessing. Yes. Jaya, yeah. wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Two more, two more of them have raised hand. Yes. Fiona, you have something to say? I have a doubt. Okay. Uh, we are blessed with the Holy Spirit from the time we were baptized. And why sometimes we don't see the fruits, uh, fruits and the gifts of the Holy Spirit in us? Because uh, it depends on whether you are going to plant the seed. That's what we are learning, right? It is given to us. But if I don't plant the seed in my heart... You are you new? Have you come before? Are you coming every day? Yeah, I have. I'm been attending from the past one month. One month. Then how are you asking this question? So it doesn't depend on God. It depends on us. And what God has given us, He has given us as a seed. If I don't plant, that's why we are learning uh, the four kinds of soil. If you are not a good soil. The problem is not with the seed. The problem is with the with the soil, with the heart. It's we who open the door. We have the freedom whether I'm going to open the door for the enemy or I'm going to open the door for the devil. Correct? Yes or no? It's given to everyone. We all have the Holy Spirit inside of us. But uh, am I going to allow my emotion to control or am I going to allow the Holy Spirit to take control? Am I going to allow this, my five senses to dictate me? Or am I going to allow the word of God to dictate me? That I have to, I have the freedom to choose. Correct? Yeah. Understood? Thank you. Yeah. And you come every day, you will get the answer. I, it, it, the question you asked is not a small question. And the answer I gave also is not a complete answer. There is much more in that. Yeah, somebody else also raised hand, no? Ria raised Ray. hand. I think Ria. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. um, I just wanted to share something that happened. I think a week. Ria, back. can you be a little louder? Yeah. Uh, what happened? You have to be quick now. We are already late. I think she has to shift her place. Okay. And uh, then we can pray, Jocelyn. Uh, I think yeah, we, yeah. yeah. Yes. We yes. Her as well. yeah. yeah. Let's pray. Yeah. 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 Close your eyes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for teaching us your word, your truth. That today we learned from David. No matter what kind of situation, he encouraged himself. In you, Lord. He strengthened himself in you. Thank you, Jesus, for anointing the hearts of these children that they understand this word and they the seed that is planted in the heart will not be choked by any kind of thorns or thistles, but they learn how to guard it. And thank you, Lord, that every time they face a problem, they will learn to encourage themselves in you, Lord, in your word, and follow your instruction. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I cancel all those negative words, the fearful words, all those words of worry that they spoke. I cancel all those words and all the consequences of those words in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And all those words that they have spoken by faith, they believe that that word of yours which we speak by faith that never comes back void or empty but it brings a hundredfold harvest in jesus name i pray amen amen thank you Jocelyn. thank you jesus uh jewel i think we can like this prayer will do so uh what we'll do is you know initial prayer uh, we will start with the children and winding prayer. Jocelyn, you it'll be good, you know, it's a kind of a 
feel enriched and then uh, you yeah. know what in our group we were saying you know we will ask for anyway yeah. we are having this session and we are getting 60 around 60 70 people we'll ask for more children every day so that you know many will get yeah. benefited yeah. so for that also we'll pray and uh, wind up thank you so yes. much yes, yes. Sure. all right Jocelyn. Thank, thank you jewel for patiently waiting and god bless you all and plus you know all, all of you i will paste the link on youtube please um you know, yeah ria said she has the question you know uh, tomorrow and this link please go and watch again and again the youtube link i am putting it for everybody yes because people were asking me the link somebody asked me the link the link is there in the chat yeah, yeah thank, thank you no, today's session will be by little late. We'll be uploading. Rest all the sessions are there in this link from one day one on. All right. Thank you, children. Thank you, Roslyn. God bless you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 B